Hey guys, welcome to our Saturday night thrift haul where we show you all the things that we buy and we thrift and tell you what we paid for them and what we will sell them for in our retail shop and you know sometimes we paint some stuff so welcome welcome if you haven't done so make sure you hit that subscribe and the notifications bell and let's get started all right so if you saw the title of the video we spent 150 dollars friday and saturday thrifting so we're going to go over that and what each individual thing costs like jamie said and then we'll tell you if you, I, i'm not going to add it up but you guys can kind of add it up as we go if you want and you'll see what our profit will be on that 150 dollars spent now obviously there's things like overhead paint and supplies and all that kind of stuff but the thing is i get asked all the time like how come you don't just go ahead and buy stuff wholesale and it's because I can thrift items that people would normally buy wholesale for a fraction of the cost and it's things that people are just getting rid of and would be in a landfill so it's like eco-friendly too. Yeah. All right, we're going to get started. Okay. So first off, we're going to get this tray out of the way. It was $3. It is probably something mass produced at like a uh, craft store or something. Do but you have a price on the back of it. No there. price on the back of this one. It's, I feel like that's like probably like a fifteen dollar tray. It does have a tag on the back of it that says it's California compliant. You know they got a lot of rules and laws on what can be sold and what can't. So, you know, it's ready to go for California. Yeah, um, in my shop that will sell for about fifteen dollars. It was three dollars. And all we'll do that is actually in great condition. Oh, new welcome JRV channel membership Michelle Jones. Hey, welcome um, Michelle. That. We'll just get a good cleaning up, maybe put a little bit of uh, dark oil wax anywhere there's a scratch. Mm -hmm. um, that product is great for just getting rid of light scratches because there's a little bit of tint in it, and then that'll be good to go. I like the finish as is. All right, I'm gonna make a big pile down here on the side. Okay, the mirror is next because it's kind of precarious. This is probably from Hobby Lobby. No, that's not a Hobby Lobby tag. That's like a uh, like a decor. It's, it's, it's boutique got a tag. tag, like a boutique tag on the back. It was normally forty-seven dollars, and it had this finish on it. Oh, you guys can see yourselves, um, or just a reflection of what we're doing. <laughs> I can see us. <laughs> so it's it's plastic. It's resin. Um, but we really like the shape of it, and it looks dirty down in here but it is not dirty down in there. It so made it look old. we're going to dry brush it. It was $10, I'll not 47. For, and I'll probably sell it for $29.95 in my shop, but I'm not going to do a whole lot to it. Usually I like to make more than three times, but in this case, I'm just going to do like some white dry brushing and it won't take very much. And then I'll sell it for 30 bucks. And the style is really cool. I want to like wipe it down so yeah, bad. It looks like it has mud in all the creases. It's not mud. It's, it's <laughs> faux mud that they faux put on there. <laughs> all right. We've got this big glass jar. It was $6 and it is pretty big. We'll do the, uh, the forearm test on it and see. It's been a while since so we've measured the So these glass jars are usually anchor hawking. hawking? Yeah, anchor hawking. Um, and this would be... I don't so, know. Yep, it is anchor um, but this size sells for, with the lid, $20 in my shop, which is about what it retails for everywhere else. Um, so 20 bucks, but I bought it for six and I will clean it up. And I also use them sometimes without the lid to put rolling pins in. So if you ever see those at the thrift store, pick them up because they're much cheaper than buying new. And if you want to display or sell rolling pins, the clear glass makes them look the best. That's a tip I learned from Will Bell. Yeah, that's, that's big shirt. enough. That was probably like $29 to $35. Yeah, new. it's a nice big glass jar. And, and you'll you still be getting it. a deal on it if you come buy it from us at our shop. I know. Well, and you, you can sell it as is, or like I said, you can put rolling pins in it. So. All right, Next. we've got these plaster candlesticks. This one was $5. This one was $4. They gave us a break on that two inches of height difference there. Um, so $9 in these, we'll probably sell them for about $15, 16 each. No, this one's probably like, because they're fatty. Oh, am this I is low 20 on the and probably 22 I'm low on the pricing because they're so 22. big around. And they'll get a new paint job. No pricing on these. On the I bottom, actually love but... the finish that's on them, but there's some damage, so they need to be repainted. Yeah, this one up top, it's got a big chip. And what we do when we get glass or plaster or porcelain that's chipped, but it's still functional. We just paint it. What we'll do is we'll paint it, but we'll also take a piece of sandpaper, 220 grit. We'll smooth that out and make it look less noticeable. And if you got any sharp edges, it'll get rid of the sharp edges too. And then you can just, you know, you don't, you don't have to worry about selling. If they were whatever. cracked and broken, I'd sell them as is because I actually really love the existing paint finish. But they do need to be 
painted. Let's talk about the big artichoke in the room. It's big Look at and how heavy. big it is compared to like, it's ginormous. So it's terracotta and they've painted it. It's kind of got a cool paint job on it. Does it have the tag on the bottom? I don't know that it's the right color. Okay, it was made in China. There's a tag over here. Yeah, it's no price tag. No price so tag. So I paid $15 for it, which is kind of a lot, but I'm gonna ask $49.95 because it's giant. Like, it's just a really big statement piece and it'll probably get painted like white or farm fresh or something with some white wax. I actually don't hate the color that it is now, but some of the terracotta is chipping through, so it needs a new paint job. So a lot of times these are plastic or resin when they're this big and they're light and you put them on your front porch and they get blown all over the place. This probably weighs about 30 pounds. It ain't going anywhere. It could go inside or outside and it's, it's gonna make, it's gonna go the distance. Yeah, I, and I think for $49.95 repainted is still a good deal because at a high-end boutique it'd probably be pushing $80 or $90. Um, Zeb did find, not that I'm saying Jamie Ray Vintage isn't a high-end boutique, but <laughs> it's not. Um, we, we got Zeb stuff did, from $295 uh, to like $700. Yeah, uh, not too much in the $700 range. No. Zeb did find his nail gun, somebody was asking. So. Oh yeah, I did find it. It was in the garage. I did not put it there, which is why I was thinking maybe someone snagged it out of the back of the car. But apparently other people in my house use my tools. <clears throat> I didn't use your tool. All right. When's the last time I like used one of your tools? You know, it could have well been Harrington or even like my brother was in town. He could have used it for something. I was like, don't you be blaming me for that. All right. Anyway, um, how do we come found. up with pricing? It, you know, there isn't a single formula because you can't guarantee what you'll get things for. Like some people say, oh, I always four times everything. Well, sometimes four times even doesn't work or sometimes it's worth more. I just price it whatever I feel like it can sell for, and I usually like to get three to four times my money if I'm going to be doing anything to it. If I'm not going to do anything to it, I feel like double my money is usually pretty good, but if I'm going to be painting it, I usually want more. So I can't right. tell if someone did a faux finish and just did like these horrible scratches on here that look like No, that's the Hobby Lobby faux finish. They're obviously and that like will get trying to distress it on purpose. They've got kind of a pattern to them. Oh, this was originally $25 at Hobby Lobby. Well, it's a well-built box and we'll put a cool paint job on it. And then. how much did we pay for it, Mr. Ray? Oh, we paid, I don't even, where's the price tag on this? I think it was like a dollar or two dollars. $1.50. Here we go. $1.50. And that's why I don't buy stuff wholesale because this is a $25 item. At wholesale, you might get it for like, I don't know, $10. And I bought it for $1.50. In our shop, we'll pre paint it and probably sell it for $15 to $20 ish. Yeah. Maybe. Depends 15. on how cool it turns out. But also, like, the paint color isn't bad, but this distressing job is totally like the Hobby All Lobby right. distress. All right. I want you to pay attention to the pattern on the distressing and tell me that a machine didn't do that. It looks like a dice. Like it's got five holes on it. All right, now we'll go over to this side. Oh, look at that. Huh. <laughs> it's just, it's like the same on all the sides. Anyways, oh. moving on from that one. We found a ton of home decor. We did like, not find, we went this afternoon because we went, Jamie look, went Friday without me while I was working at the farmhouse. We didn't have a video yesterday because it kind of took a sick day and like took it easy and just you did You took a stuff. sick day and you worked at the farmhouse all day and didn't film. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did film some of my stuff that I did, but Jamie went thrifting without me yesterday and found a lot of this stuff, but we didn't find any furniture. So we went thrifting again today because, you know, no we, we sold a bunch of furniture this week, the last couple weeks and no furniture again. So we're going to have to probably hit a marketplace. That's where we find a lot of our big good deals on furniture. All right, so this is a not old jar, but it has a Presto lid, which uh, this is the old. So this is an old lid because it's got the glass in it, but this jar itself is a repop, but it was a dollar. So this has a commemoration. It says 1913 to 1915. I think they messed up on that because in, underneath it, it says 100 years of American heritage made in USA. Apparently, they can't do math over at the ball jar company. I don't know, but it's 1913. We paid a dollar for it, and it has a tag underneath that's handwritten for 9.98 from vendor number 20. Oh, vendor number 20. I don't know where it originally came from, but we paid a dollar at the thrift store. A and lot the lid of is cool. The lid is not the lid original is, with it. It's legit old, so I'll probably sell it for like 6.95 because the lid's cool, but the jars are repop. Trying to get the shine off of it for you there. Uh, just blinding you. I'm sorry. 
Pam says she loves green. We're actually going to be painting with pantry door today. Ooh, so um, that is green. green. So we are coming up with some green stuff. And we're going to show you guys um, a new formulation of a paint color. And also hemp oil came out this week. So we're going to be talking about Food that. Safe. So stay tuned. Don't leave because we're going to talk about uh, that. Did the flowers or did the topiaries or whatever these things, these, these no, they bushes? Up, they were $2 each and I got three of them. One's over there. So the bushes were $2 each they're they're pretty detailed i would say if you were like down at michael's or no, hobby $7. lobby oh there's, so they were seven dollars right? okay. no well, i paid two but they would have been seven dollars at the store that tag actually looks like it's really old um it actually looks like it's from taipan oh really yeah taipan's a store here but anyways yeah so these were would have been seven dollars i paid two dollars they're in new condition i bought three bunches of them i love to buy greenery at the thrift store as long as it doesn't look like super old like i don't buy any ivy i don't buy any weird old greenery that looks you know 1995 called so we paid four dollars for the greenery this was two dollars for the uh the i don't know jamie's been calling them urns but they don't have lids it's not a what is it i don't know it's a pot it's an urn right <laughs> it's terracotta that's been spray painted gold or it's painted gold new, from the factory no it's been spray painted gold it's getting a new finish but so so this all together with the four dollars in greenery and the two dollar pot we were six dollars in with the price oh if i were to sell it together probably like 25 bucks 25 bucks see i would have guessed about 23 23 22.95 yeah oh maybe 22.95 i think you're right yeah but that definitely is getting a new paint job and the greenery looks great in the store like everybody is coming in it's like oh it looks so fresh and you know, bring it in spring and it's just greenery that i bought at the store speaking of which so this was all together this was three dollars for this and this isn't necessarily our style it's been glazed and it's pretty shiny we probably will repaint this and give it some new life but uh you it's know we may, we may leave it, it. Good. yeah i think we paid it so three dollars but it came with one two three four five six seven of these roses and these are the um fresh picked ones they're, they're the like big detailed ones they're the really detailed ones that are in great shape like you know like there's cheap flowers and expensive ones these are the expensive ones they're normally 6.99 a piece and i got uh seven of them include and this for three dollars so i will probably group these so normally what i do in the shop is i'll take things like this and i'll tie twine around them so they all stick together and i tag just the floral and then i put them inside something else probably not this because the proportions are actually off but um i put them inside something else and i price it separately so they can buy the item or they can buy the flowers but they don't have to buy them together occasionally i'll price them together most of the time i price them separate so separately just these flowers I probably would ask like $19.95 because there's seven of them and they retail normally for $7 a piece. But looking at them on camera there, they look real. Yeah. And they actually just sitting here looking at them, they look pretty real too. All right. Okay, we've got this. I use, okay, so I have a question that okay, Melissa says. Answer some I used my DIY paint on a chest and once I figured out how to apply it, I love it. I bought the number 12 brush. Can I do clear wax with it and how many coats of wax? Um, if you, you, you can apply wax with any brush, it's better if you use a wax brush. If you use a brush that you plan to use paint on later, you have to get all that wax out of your brush before you paint. So if you don't have a wax brush, I would like just use a lint free rag to apply it or take that number 12 brush and dedicate it to waxing because it is really difficult to get all that wax out of later. And wax brushes typically are like stiff. So They've got the a wax, shorter bristle on them. The wax doesn't get up inside of the wax brush, but a number 12 isn't gonna have a stiff of a bristles. So you might be wasting more wax if it gets down in there because you're gonna scoop in there and the wax is just gonna go up inside that brush. So you can do it, but I would suggest either getting a wax brush or using a limb-free rag. You'll probably be happier in the long run that way. So hopefully that answers your question. Have we missed any? Look at all the silver birds. Oh. We've been we've had channel members for a year oh. now, and there's a bunch of silver birds next to people's names. That's awesome. Poifer mom, po Polari mom says it is an urn. It is an urn. All right. And uh, Deborah's on here. She says her and Deborah are washing. Oh, uh, newsflash: the Yoda dog sold Zeb. He has a new home. Nice. Hi. Did they have a Yoda dog too? Or was that our Yoda dog? Maybe our Yoda dog sold. I don't know. We sold it a long time ago, but maybe they had one too. Uh, Pebby says, yay, I got a silver bird. 
Nice. Oh, and Frazier says our stencil brushes work great with wax. I actually do love our stencil brushes because they're stiff like a wax brush, and when you're doing the colored waxes, it's nice to use them. All right, moving back. Okay, these are from, start. these are European. They, they're almost, this one here almost has like a, um, it's, I don't need It's blue green, green and, and they're wavy, and I don't know if. We if, can't tell if they're actually old, but they're. I don't they're, think they're old. They're from Europe or, or maybe Canada. They're in Some milliliters. Some of these milliliters. I just thought they were pretty. But we liked, so Jamie was going to put these back, and I was like, um, the color's right. And so she. She was back and forth on them because they aren't very big, but they are cool. So we we, we we went and sprung for them. They weren't very much. I mean, a dollar each, I think. Um, yeah, a dollar or dollar fifty is that what's it? It says a dollar. A dollar each. They'll sell for probably five ninety five each in our shop. But let me double check underneath it and make sure it's not. Because sometimes it'll tell you. It, it says milliliters and something else. Hold on. I don't. Dabney, the new business membership is monthly, not a one-time, because it's billed just like the regular channel membership, only it's the business coaching level. You get a lot of videos out of it, though. We're doing yeah. at least a video a week right now. And and we post, we, I post in that group about five days a week different motivational yeah, it's tips a lot more and tricks. Intensive. And I answer a lot of questions that are business-oriented in the business coaching. So we're hoping to get a video up on it in the next week or two, going with all the details. Yeah. So these were 75 okay. cents each, all three of these little brass candlesticks and they were all over in the store but oh, someone must have yeah i found them all and i probably list those for like 3.95 the brass does sell the glassware sells um pretty much all of our smaller items sell on a regular basis we actually had a bunch of brass and recently somebody came in and they bought all of the brass candlesticks that we had so we're now we're starting a new collection of them and i kind of like to stage them all together well, i don't we, generally paint my brush occasionally i will but most of the time we, we don't paint it it sells it, better on paint was it the amber jars someone was doing yeah, a wedding for amber color jars centerpieces too. for a wedding and they wanted the amber jars so they just went and bought all of them that we had spent like i don't know it was a lot of jars <laughs> Okay, so Janine Harris said thanks for everything and gave us a super chat. Super chat. Thanks, thanks Janine. Janine. All right, we've got a pig here. This Jamie calls it the cuddle pig. This is a little 75 cent pig. It just says cuddle pig. pig underneath. I just thought the pig was too cute. I just like to buy little things like that to put around the shop. Sometimes you get little kids in here and they get super excited to find something they can actually afford. Like that, it was 75 cents, we'll probably paint it cute and sell it for three bucks. Um, so I had a question on here from... Pebby, or not, not Pebby, where was it on here? They asked, oh, Stacy says, if I join in February, will I be really lost in the business coaching? The thing about the business coaching is like, the sooner you get in, the sooner you can grow from the business coaching. However, we're doing units like every week. So you can go back and watch old units. So if you join in February, if you have the time, you can go back and watch some of the other live videos so that way you can get caught up. So, so I think can... I think we'll take them down like two months at a time so that, you well, know, we'll they need see. to go back because some of them are like for social media. They just need to be yeah. available and on there. So there'll be lots of good information. We haven't decided how to work that because, you know, to make it fair for everybody who's been joined for like a year or whatever when we get that to that point. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to figure that in out. Answer to your question. If you join in February, you're not going to be lost. It's good anytime. Yeah, All right, right now on. you can still go back and watch. Katie's scrap. These are a dollar. I'm gonna I'm gonna show them some okay. stuff real quick. Well, I was just gonna say, where can I get info on joining? If you um, email creativebusiness at jamierayvintage.com if you have questions, or you can just hit the join button um, that's right next to the subscribe button, and there's information. I can hear the ocean. Sorry, I couldn't resist doing that. All right, so these were a dollar a piece. Got them for the coloration. They're pretty small, just uh, the tall candlesticks. And they'll probably be about four ninety five each, I think. Probably three ninety five. Three ninety five. I just really like the blue green; they're really pretty. All right. I couldn't pass them up. So and these are new old stock. What's new up old next? stock, which means they've never been used, but they are old. Um, they were fifty cents each. They're Fire King. Look at that cute little sticker in the bottom. I will leave the sticker in the bottom, and I will probably sell. How much were they? Fifty cents each. Fifty cents each. Uh, so that was three dollars. I'll probably sell them for like twelve ninety five for the set of six. Yeah. And when I, have, when I find things like that, I usually don't sell them individually. I just sell them as a set because most people would want six of them to do like desserts with or whatever. 
Um, if you guys have questions, Caitlin is on here also answering them. She jumped the gun and told them about yeah, the new stencils. We have, our Valentine's Day stencils are out and I'm super excited about them. I'm going to be playing them with them this week, so watch out for that. If you can't wait to watch me play with them, you can already get them at JamieRayVintage.com. We've got a cute little mini set of stencils, which I'm super excited about. And our retailers will be getting them too, so if you, yeah. want, you want to it, check out the local we retailers. We have over 60 retailers in the United States, Australia, Germany, Canada. So you can check out jrbwholesale.com and find a retailer near you or pick them up on the website. All right. This is metal. We paid $4 for it and we'll probably sell it for about 20 ish. 20? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. We're going to paint that with, um, we're going to paint it with the sweet Pickett's milk paint because it's bio certified. So that means it's food safe and we'll seal it up with a hemp oil. Stay tuned because I'm going to be mixing milk paint live on camera when we're done. We're going to paint this. Caitlin says she likes to sprinkle the links throughout the live. Nice. That's why we love you, Kate. Kaylin is sick, 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 and she's on here. She's this awesome. was a this was a round two pick. Jamie was going through the art. Oh, did you see it's broken? Where? Down here in the corner. <gasps> it's broken bad. Oh. I can't man. I can't sand that break. Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. Oh well, you can sand it so it's not sharp and somebody can still use it. It's, no, a, it's an air vent. It's not an air vent. Okay. I would use it. Okay, well you can take it home because that's too broken. Okay. All right. Caitlin, so do you need a butter dish? You see that chip in there? I can't just get rid of it. Somebody could. We're use usually it. pretty good at catching so broken pretty. stuff at the thrift store, but we missed that. Darn it. Oh, Caitlin, well. do you want this butter dish? Three dollars. It's cute. I think it's it would have been about twelve to fifteen, I think, because it's I pretty know. big. It's really pretty. You know what? I'll use that butter dish, and I'll take my white butter dish that I have at home that I thrifted, and I'll sell that one here because I don't care that it has a chip in it. It's cute. All right, Jamie thrifted this without me yesterday. Apparently, she's got a thing for strawberries right now. Um, it's made in Italy. Does anybody know? like possibly anything about this i i just saw it and thought it was super cool and i thought it looked like mccoy but it says stamped made in italy so i don't think i mean i know it's not mccoy because it's made in italy so anybody have any ideas on that because i have no idea i'm thinking if it's not like turning out to be super valuable then it'll probably sell for about 14.95 in the shop and i paid two bucks for it and I just really love it. Sometimes I pick up stuff just because I love it and I have no idea if it's worth money. And then later I find out that it is. It's been a little while since we've had a Pyrex offering here because for whatever reason, you're going to see me mix some milk paint up in a Pyrex bowl that didn't sell. Sometimes the Pyrex just sits around for a long time and then it gets used in the shop to mix paints up. <laughs> oh, it's newer stuff is made in Italy, so it's not expensive. Okay, well then 12 bucks it is. Oh, Sally Bunswell, super Thank chat. You, Sally. you have a great week too. All right, we talking about the Pyrex. I was just this was two dollars. So Pyrex, I don't know anything about Pyrex. I really don't. Like sometimes I look stuff up. The Daisy pattern. I just picked these pieces up because they were Pyrex and they're in I would say pretty darn close to mint condition. There's a couple of small blemishes on them, but they are really in good condition. The color's great. So, um, so when Jamie says she doesn't know anything about Pyrex, it's not because she can't figure it out. I it's could because Google it. it's because she doesn't care to know she's gonna probably sell it for like 10, 12 bucks and move on with her life. Yeah. So both of the dishes they'll sell for twelve ninety five each. Oh, they're Cinderella Pyrex. They said, and I there's a group called the Utah Pyrex Pirates. Pirates? Yeah, Utah Pyrex Pirates, and it's not a huge group. But they know a ton about Pyrex, so occasionally I'll go on there and be like, Hey, what do you guys know about this? Um, but if anybody collects those and needs those, twelve ninety five each, and we do ship. Caitlin will drop the email in. But anything that you see that you like, if you're interested in having it shipped, um, it's Lehigh Shop at JamieRayVintage.com. So we have on our old uh, Hoosier in the in the opening uh, room of the shop. The opening room. Oh, the strawberry the picture room. is listed on Etsy, eighteen to forty dollars. So I'll sell it for. $12.95 and somebody will get a deal. There All right. you go. Sorry. All right, so we've got a bunch of these tarnished silver platters in the shop, and we use an old chicken feeder on top of the Hoosier to kind of display them, and it just looks cool up there. And occasionally someone will come by and buy stuff, but it'll hold about 20 platters, and we never fill it up, so people are buying them displayed like that. Yeah, it's, it's fun. People actually, actually ask to buy the chicken feeder, and... I never will sell it because I want to use it someday somewhere and I can't decide where. So if you see pink, grab it. Yes, Melanie Mel, 
Pink Pyrex, I always pick it up because it's cute and I like it. <laughs> so so this was a dollar fifty. We'll probably sell this for about twelve. Yeah, 10 no, nine ninety five. Nine ninety five. That's a nine ninety five size. And so a lot of times people will come in and they need like a bunch of tarnished silver for an event, and they'll come in and buy like a bunch of pieces, and then I they they buy me out. It's okay. not something that sells. A, I'm trying a ton, to show you. Oh, there we go. There's the. But pattern. people know I have it, and so when they need it for a project, they'll totally come in and buy it, which is awesome. All right, we're losing. So Jamie got a bunch of books. These all open up. So I've, I've seen a lot of people. Whoa. What? Did you break something? I didn't break anything. I just got a good clank out of it. Just a all few right. light taps with my toe. I'm like, did you did you break the fire conditions? Because those are no. my favorite. Okay, so I see people take these books and they add IOD molds on them. But I cannot do that to books because my sister's a librarian. But I found these and they're not really books. They're actually like little jewelry boxes or like... I don't want to hurt Deborah's feelings, but I've always wanted to do it to a book, and I might. She's watching. <laughs> Anyways, Deborah and I can have candid conversations. I know. So these got <laughs> these all have hidden compartments in them, every single one of them. The most expensive one is $5, and then goes all the way down to $2 for this little one. Um, and we are going to do a DIY showing you guys how to emit, like alter books. We'll paint them, add some molds. And so the big ones were five, the little one was two, the medium sized ones were three each. Yeah, and they'll probably sell for like $20 down to like $12-ish. And I think they'll look cool because they all have kind of stuff on them and texture like they were stamped yeah. leather. So I'm excited about that. So I finally get to do the molds on books without ruining actual books. So my sister, Deborah, the librarian is happy and Zeb's happy because he's still wanting to do it for a while. And we, I found these in, they have this cart at the beginning of the thrift store that's like the go back cart. And these were all in the go back cart. So never underestimate the go back cart. I always check it. Look how cool they look just time. stacked up like that. I know, they do look cool. If I was into like moody or darker colors, I would leave them that way, but I usually paint stuff. Deborah right. says you could show her the book and she'll give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you can go ahead and, and alter it. All right, I'm gonna stand here by the camera and we're gonna run through this over here a little quick. This is a dollar, little basket for dividing, put canning jars in I have there. a bunch of canning jars that I'm gonna paint them and I'm gonna put them in here. I have like a whole box of them, so. Jamie went to Uglies. We got this Uglies is a thrift store, just so you know, and the guy that um, owns it is very entertaining. So How much are you going to sell that for? Oh, this I'll put three jars in and sell for like 20 something dollars with the jars. And that's two. So this that's... is like, well, it needs to be tightened up. With... There's another one. This one was a dollar. I don't know so why this the will probably Well, because this one's taller, oh, so shorter. I'll probably just sell them each for nine ninety five. And I actually love the patina on these. I've sold them before. I don't paint them. I leave them as is. Yeah, he, like, I think we got more from him that were just like that before. Yeah. These are made by Rubel, R-U-B-E-L. He's got a source. All right, so fun mirror. It's long, narrow. And let's see, this was $7. Whoa. Going. Laura says you can still read the book after the mold's applied, which is true. All right, so $7 for the mirror. I just... I actually, if I really wanted to, I'd alter a book. I just like to tease my sister. So what, this is $7, and this I'll probably sell for like $22. We'll paint it for it sure. It originally was from Hobby Lobby for $30. And then did we show them these up? I haven't yet. I'll okay. come back over. I'm just showing them all this, this stuff. This candlestick is corner. gorgeous. The bottom on it is like to die for. This candlestick will be painted like a white shade, and then I'll wet distress all that beautiful like patina back through. How much? Are you, it was four dollars. Yeah, that'll sell for probably twenty-five because that one's really ornate. Um, somebody basket. said this mirror is fine as is, which it is okay, but it's not. It's got some chips in it. It's not really my style. So. The thing is, when Jamie's curating things from the thrift store, she's always thinking like, where will that fit in the shop? Will it look good with yeah. the colors I already have? So that was two. How much was that? Two dollars. Two dollars. But and it came with all those little mini terracotta pots, which I thought would be so cute. So like if I could find some little things to plant in them, like little fake flowers, and put some IOD molds on them. And the pots themselves are worth about a buck each and there's a ton in there. And also the little carrier, all these little apples, they're kind of dated. So we will take the apples off of it and then I'll paint this. And when this gets painted, it's gonna look really farmhouse. 
because this is like old country farmhouse and we're going to bring it up to more modern farmhouse just by removing the apples and repainting it and i'll probably sell for about 15 dollars just this piece and then these i'll separate out and do something else with all right, we've got a scale. I saw the scale and it was broken and passed on it. And then Jamie saw the scale and grabbed it. And then she found me later in the thrift store. And she's like, hey, can you fix that? And I said, yeah, probably. <laughs> and this will sell for $20 in the shop once he fixes that. So it was $3 broken. And it's, it's got a metal body. The top is plastic. And we'll, uh, we'll adjust it back so that the weight is right. And then I will, the, this, I might fix it tonight. I don't have my super glue with me, but I might just try to hot glue gun that since it's not going to really be touching anything. Okay. I love scales. I could never find them. So I was happy to find that one for three bucks, even though it was broken. All right. We've got a bunch of greenery over here and then I've got a frame and a basket over there. All right. What are you gonna do with this? So that was actually free, and I don't know, I'm gonna put it in something. This was free, huh? Well, because I bought all that other greenery, and I told him, I said, this doesn't have a price tag, and he said, I'll just give it to you. So it was free. Here's another one of those $2 ones. I'll put it like in a, see that in a basket, I'll just have it cascading out of a basket. Not that basket, because that basket's too big, but I'll put it in a smaller basket and just have it cascading out for greenery. It just looks like- And uh, that basket was $4, and I'll sell it for 20. It's a big, Big, big basket. All right, and then here we have, this is, I'm gonna guess this is a wintry wreath because it's lit, it has lights on it. Yeah, I'm gonna take the lights off of it, I think, or I'll save it for Christmas next year. It was $5 and this wreath is beautiful. So as is, if I leave it, I mean, I'll probably sell it for 30 bucks and I might take off the red stuff and add something to make it more useful now, or I might just keep it the way it is, put it with Christmas and save it for next year. But that wreath I couldn't pass up because it was so pretty. All right, and then we've got these. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That one is not stable. <laughs> Topiary down. We've got these topiaries, but you can see they're all loose and wobbly in here. This has been, uh, they either were outside in the wind or some kid I got, got a hold of them. You got that one? Yeah. I'll and so the base is all loose. What we're going to do is we're going to get like that spray foam that expands that you can get at the hardware store for sealing up gaps and things in your home. And we're going to use it on this. Um, the, uh, oh, what is it? There's a, there's a glue company that makes the white brand. I can't, I can't remember the name. It'll come to me. Well, at any length, these topiaries are probably what, like three feet tall? Um, uh, yeah. Two and a half to no, three feet. They're, they're close to three. And we will sell them for probably $30, um, maybe $35 a piece. They're a little bit dusty, but the actual greenery part is in really great condition. So we'll clean that off. And then we'll put the spray foam in the bottom, like Zeb says. And then I'm going to paint, I'm going to repaint them because these need a new paint job. And then once they're repainted, I'll just go to the dollar store and put some new moss over it. But I'm going to wait till it's painted because I might get a little paint on this old moss. And I want to be able to cover that up. So I remembered, really I remembered Tight Bond. They make a uh, foam spray that is white. Because a lot of brands are like this yellow orangey color and the Tight Bond is a white foam. Oh, they think that this greenery looks great in that basket. Yeah, I love greenery kind of spilling out everywhere. And actually, yeah, it doesn't look too bad in it. So either in this basket or another one. But anytime I can pick up good greenery and expensive, free in this case. How much was the basket? Four dollars. So for twenty. It's a big basket. And it's got great patina on it, so I'll just clean it and leave it it's as it's big is. enough you could hold three or four pillows next to your couch. So they may be top heavy, add stones or concrete to the pot. No, it's just because they are top heavy, but when they move it causes it to fall over. Once we secure the topiary, they'll be just fine. Okay. Alright, we have two frames and then we're done with the pick and we're that gonna start a painting a couple decor. of things. That was 35 minutes of just small items. So it was $150 of items that cost anywhere from like eight to eight dollars to fifty cents. So it was a lot. Yeah. Okay, so pick up this frame. Did you get did you like the, the picture in the middle or are you gonna change that out? Um I'm probably gonna I don't know. It's kind of a print style. I really like that. I kind like of botanicals. Style. I have some botanicals but in the, the shop. The frame is like a pinkish color. I don't think Pinky that'll gold. last. Yeah, the frame will get painted. I probably um, will take out the print and sell just the frame. I like painted frames. So I got this because I'm going to put the printable for this month's uh, channel members. Everybody that's a channel member, this is for the first tier of channel membership, gets two printables now because we're doing that now. We do two printables instead of a book chapter because the book's kind of done and being revised and edited. So channel members, if you haven't seen the post, Check we put out it the up about two tab. hours before this video earlier today 
There is an equestrian barn scene that got wild. Everything colored. equestrian's been selling for me really fast, so I decided to do an equestrian barn. Um, and Zeb did the watercolor. I picked out the design, and we're gonna put that in this frame here. And that's what we do. People ask us, what do you do with the printables? We just use them for frames, and then we sell them as artwork. Sometimes we decoupage. I, the horse on that, I think, could be decoupaged on something small pretty easily. Yeah, we actually did do that uh, picture from France in black and white and decoupage it oh, on a yeah, big top. I have it. I'll go grab it. You're so this was four dollars with a printable in there. We'll probably sell it for I'll like grab it fifteen fast to twenty. Because I, what am I going to talk to the people about while you're gone? Um, get that ready to paint. Okay. Time flies when you're having fun. It does. All right, I'm going to grab this metal tray here. Zeb says get it ready to paint, so it's ready. Hold on. Dust removed. Okay, it's ready to be painted. <laughs> He's coming back. He's going to show you guys um, we decoupaged one of the printables on So this something. this was orange before. We painted it and then I decoupaged the printable. I think this was November's printable. Yeah, that's a picture from France that we took and then Zeb just because you can print them out in color or black and white So if you I think they're really pretty to take the printables and print them out in black and white and then we decoupage it on there using the liquid patina so That is an option if you want to um, use the printables in that way and Kim says that looks gorgeous I agree Kim someday somebody's gonna buy it. I think we have that listed at like 20 bucks if you guys remember um, I picked that tall orange urn looking thing probably in October-ish, and that's what that was. We painted it in white swan, put that on there, and then we put on the black wax to kind of meld it. Everybody says that's gorgeous and beautiful. So I did a really good job on it. I did the black wax. I can't take credit for anything else. Okay, let's get some milk paint made up. I'm coming right now with it. I know, I'm not, I'm not rushing you. Um, would you? I'm rushing myself. We you're rushing yourself. We got like 15 minutes to mix milk paint and paint some stuff. Okay, can you give me tarnished pearl? <laughs> Yes. So tarnished pearl, Here's if you look formula. on our website, you will see the words new formula. The old formula was really close to crinoline, and so they reformulated it to look a little bit more of a brownish cream. And so I wanted to show you guys the new tarnished pearl. So if you order on the website um, and it says new formula, then you're getting the new formula of tarnished pearl. Zeb, can you get me a... Um, yes, I'm going to give you the old... We, I'm gonna show you the old so you can compare it. We do have a good amount of the old formula of Tarnished Pearl. So let's say you've started a project with the old formula of Tarnished Pearl and you need more, then what you need to do is you need to email Caitlin at customercare at jamierayvintage.com and Caitlin will check our back stock inventory and we can get that to you. But Zeb's gonna show you kind of the difference. Can you pass me that um, screwdriver, sweetie? Yeah. I'm super excited because I kind of thought the old color looked close to crinoline, even though I still loved it, and now I'm excited. Well, it's definitely it's not sure. nearly, crinoline leans, it's a yellow cream color, and this is definitely not as yellow as So this is brown. like a brownish gray cream. So we're going to show you old tarnished pearl next to new tarnished pearl. All right. There you go. Do you guys see the difference between the two? I don't know if the camera is really picking up the difference. We'll have to, in the next this week really or does, two. It looks more like an old pearl that's tarnished. Yeah. So, well, I'm going to use it on something. So like in the something. next week or two, we'll paint something big, though. So yeah, we'll paint something big see, for you guys. Caitlin, actually, Caitlin, when you order paint next, would you order me a few quarts of it so I can do some big projects in it? Because I feel like when we... Uh... Left is darker. Um, it's not necessarily darker. It's just um, a di totally different hue. It's beautiful. All right, so pass me that big tall candlestick there. The big tall one. Oh, you nice. Give me the big one. It's very, it's very bottom heavy, just like me. <laughs> Renee says she likes the new one, and then Peppy says, "Oh, I can see that." All right. Don't worry. This had been through a microwave before we ever thrifted it, and it was all worn yeah. out. And we tried to sell it as, as it was anyway, and no one was buying it, so now it mixes milk paint. People always say, like, you're using real Pyrex. It's dishwasher dried Pyrex. Yeah, that's not a microwave so dishwasher. It's, it's not survived. Okay, so we're going. This is Pantry Door in Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. This is a huge tub because we get it by the gallon. And I'm just going to mix up a little bit because I don't think I'm going to need too much. But I'm going to mix it up thick. Usually you go one to one ratio. So one part powder to one part water. 
and I'm going to do a little bit less water. And then since we're painting on metal, we're also going to be adding the extra bond, which will help it not all chip off. It'll, it'll make it adhere really nicely and not get crackly and chippy. It may still chip some, and if it's not chipping enough, we can kind of force it with a wet distress later and reactivate it. But we're going to see what it does with the proper amount of extra bond. In we're going to try to get it painted and we're going to try to show you the new hemp oil. Um, so all the milk paint, Sweet Pickets milk paint and farmhouse finishes are all natural and USDA bio certified, which means they're food safe. And now we carry hemp oil, which is also food safe and hemp oil can be used over DIY paint as well. Oh, I got to get, I got a little whisk I got for myself. So we use an immersion blender, but I find when you do these small amounts, it's not enough to mix it up and kick it up into the immersion blender. Plus so, the blender's loud. Yeah. Yeah. So I purchased some whisks from the dollar store. We got real fancy and he bought a whisk at the dollar store. Let's see. Oh, um, I have somebody ask a question. I, I lost the name. I'm sorry, but somebody asked a question about that. Um, decoupage picture that we just showed you. So we painted it in white swan, let it dry completely, and then we sealed it. And then we decoupage the picture on it because, or or maybe we didn't seal it, but you should seal it because no, I sealed it with because the, you don't want to the if you decoupage like the you, it's water soluble, and sometimes when you decoupage, you kind of have to overwork it. So it's probably best to paint it, seal it, then decoupage it. We use the liquid patina. And then once it was sealed, we came back with that black wax, that was the very last step, and aged it. And the reason why we waited is for two things. One, because we kind of wanted to go over the edge of the picture. And two, if you put black wax over the paint before doing either a clear coat of sealer or wax, it just absorbs it and makes it really dirty looking. And so if it already has some sort of sealer, it gives you a little bit more control. So I always seal it with clear wax or big top or liquid patina, and then I do the black wax. So I hope that answers your question. So I was mixing this up really thick and I may have gone a little too thick. I'm just gonna add a little bit more water. It, um, was, it was more like a paste. I am gonna do <laughs> a pretty heavy wet distress on this so you can see this gorgeous patina. I'm just adding an extra layer of color on it. All right. Time to get painting. Well, I'm gonna wash this. Which is a better sealer on rolling pins, butcher block oil or hemp oil? Either one is sufficient. Um, so the hemp oil. Is I think the hemp oil to, will dry harder. Yeah, the hemp oil will dry harder. The butcher block oil absorbs down in and protects the wood like that from like water and moisture. Okay, so probably hemp oil. But then. the hemp oil. So like, if you want to do like a butcher block countertop, the hemp oil would be good for that. But you want to do a few coats. Okay, Zeb answered it. So hemp oil would be better. I don't know. Can we didn't have it? the hemp oil before, which is why we used butcher block oil. Because we want it to be food safe. Mm -hmm. What color is Zeb using? Zeb is using a uh, pantry door, which is a really great vintage green. Oh, it's a sweet pickups color. I gotta go get some more water. I'll be right back. What do you need? I'm cleaning that. Oh, it's clean enough. It's got something on the top. Oh, Zeb, Zeb I, don't, I think we're out of wipes, sweetie. You're gonna have to get a paper towel or something. Um, what is hemp oil used for? It's used over paint to seal it with and it's USDA, um, it's food safe. So a lot of times when people are painting stuff that's going in the kitchen, they want it to be food safe. So Laura says, I'm obsessed with using white wax directly over, oh, I just got a lot of paint on my sweater. Good thing it washes off. Um, I'm obsessed with using white wax directly over the Sweet Pick and Smell paint. It makes a beautiful finish. Do the farmhouse finishes not save once they're mixed? Um, I actually had one keep for quite a while in the fridge, but they they usually don't. You, sh you can try to save it in the fridge, but most of the time they'll firm up. So you should only mix what you're going to use. If they're not mixed, they're just in the powder form, they'll last pretty much indefinitely. It's just pigment and stuff. In fact, I think that paint's still in the fridge. I think that there's farmhouse So this says the this is oxygen orange. It's not. It's water with dish soap in it that I mixed up a little while back. Um, I like to do that because these are super cheap. They're like a dollar at the dollar store, and now I've got a spray bottle. Are you sure it's got cleaner in it? Yep. 
because it's my it was in my special spot that I hid it in because if I don't hide it it'll get used for something that it's not supposed farmhouse to be used info for. question mark question mark question mark oh farmhouse info Zeb is still working on structural upgrades but I got a lot done yesterday but yesterday because he wasn't filming and he didn't have to edit a video he got a ton done he will be back there next week doing more structural upgrades and we might go down to four videos a week until the structural upgrades are done because really I'm not gonna lie they're not interesting well, I filmed a little bit of it so you guys can see what I'm doing so when I talk about it you know what's going on but it, it's, it's enough to it, make one video so we'll probably do another week of it and then we'll do a video on it so next week might be another four week video but once he gets done with the structural upgrades then we can start doing more filming in there because it's more interesting we're going to be putting the kitchen in when i'm done with the structural upgrades and the contractor was out that's doing the concrete for us we've been kind of on hold for weather but the uh, the footing secured enough they're going to do the foundation walls up on that here hopefully in the next week or so and then once that's done and gets inspected and the city says okay you're good to go i can start doing flooring for the addition and putting walls up. Let's see if I have time for that. We might just only film that for a while because that's what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> We're working on it. Okay. People always ask, but when is it going to be finished? I'm like, when it's finished, you'll know. <laughs> Denise got her silver bird. All right. They're dying for you to paint that. I'm, I'm going. I'm sorry. I went and ran a bunch of errands and stuff looking for cleaner and things. Are you sure that's pantry door and not Old Olive? Um, yeah. Okay. Old Olive is really close. Yeah. I need to label my... Old Olive is more of a... It's almost like this a sagey like, color. My milk paint, I buy it by the... Well, I guess everybody can buy it by the gallon, but when I buy it, it comes in a Ziploc bag. So I need to, I need to mark it on my containers. Yep, Zeb is using Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. He said it's in Pantry Door, um, which is a really cool vintage green. And he added the extra bond to it because we're painting metal. So it helps it adhere good. And we're hoping to, and it's also food safe. And since somebody might use it as a cake plate, that's always good. Oh, Issa Q, Issa KK or QQ says, thank you guys for going back to the basics of painting big pieces. I learned a lot and it inspired me to paint. Awesome. Yeah, we're going to start going back to painting furniture once a week. At least you'll get furniture videos. This last week we had two. That big hutch that we did sold. It's sold and it's going to Oklahoma. Yep, it's shipping to Oklahoma. <laughs> it's going to take a few months for my shipping guy to get it there because he's got a full schedule. But it is going to be shipped there. So that's awesome. Oh, and an update, you guys. You know, when we did that skeleton lamp, it actually just sold today. People always ask me, do those skeleton lamps sell? They absolutely do. And they look great in the shop. And the good news is that we found another one, so I can replace that one, so I have another one in the shop. Anna says she is addicted to cake plates. She has to stop herself from buying them. <laughs> that, that's like me and rolling pins or candlesticks. Every time I see them, I'm like, oh. We actually have a good amount of candlesticks in the shop, so I, I'm a little bit pickier when I pick them up. Tuff and Ken says do a decoupage tutorial like the one we did on the canister. We'll have to find another canister. So I did. We did that live. I did it live channel for members. channel members. <laughs> yeah, we did it live because it is something channel members get. Those printables, we did a video for it. Oops, I just poked myself. Are you all right? You Who do take... you use to ship? Um, so you ship. You ship. We have a guy um, that we don't give out, but he was through you ship. But you can use you ship and um, I also ship through UPS and USPS for my smaller items if, if they're like pretty big I'll usually use UPS like if they're not furniture but big like those wise men that you guys saw from a few weeks back those sold and I shipped them to I want to say like Connecticut somewhere back east and I had to take two boxes tape them together bubble wrap them like crazy and fill them with packing peanuts and they weren't heavy but they were big and so we shipped them through ups because it was much cheaper than usps okay so first coat's almost on this top should go pretty quick 
did the pink rocker sell no it hasn't yet but we just it's only been out on the floor two days we've had a ton of interest it is a higher priced item at two hundred dollars so it might take a while but the pictures that i posted yesterday of the shop on instagram and facebook my number one asked item people were asking about is the pink rocker so i don't doubt that it will sell oh i guess i should take the price tag off the top yeah do that i just poked myself with this like thing that's on here did you see these come off i don't think this one does it does it screws out you, you want me to take that off, that off? yeah Lynn, the old channel member videos, if you scroll back through community, the links are still there for now. <clears throat> so if you want to watch And we're not old, stopping those. We're doing one Tuesday. Like, yeah. we're doing a video Tuesday. If you're part of the regular JRV channel membership, you will get a video this Tuesday from us. Well, maybe this one doesn't come out. Okay. And we will also be doing a business channel membership, but we'll we'll announce that live. In You're that stuck. Group. That nail is embedded in there. It's like they plastered it in. Oh, could you got the zipper? I'm not gonna know. Okay. <laughs> Maybe later I will, but not. All right. It's really well, I'll loud. paint it, and then you can zip it off later when we're off camera. Because I don't love those pokey things on the top of them. All right. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of the tarnished pearl color. I would say it's like a really light, 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 light gray like it's kind it's of it's looking really white on camera it's white but it's like a white with a gray hue but a gray brown and it's not like the vintage linen i don't know we'll how get to some good it. pictures of it and do a video with it like really a, pretty like an edited video so you guys can get the the truer color of it because under these lights when we Sandy do says the nail videos, is to keep the candle on I know. yeah we we take them out though <laughs> I don't want most yeah. people aren't going to burn a candle on it. They're going to just they leave do, it in the like, house. just set it on there and then they don't burn it. I guess I, I'll leave it on there. We'll see what people do. All right. Okay, I'm going to clean up my brush strokes here real quick and my extra paint. What's the status of the beautiful unpainted server? All the people in the world that say, don't paint natural wood. It's beautiful. Ain't nobody showed up with cash to buy it. So as soon as I have a second, that thing's getting a really fun paint job. I just haven't had the time and it's got to get a really good paint job because anytime I paint natural wood that people tell me not to paint, I have to make sure that the paint job is over the top awesome so that I can be like, but look, it's still good. So if you're one of those people that likes the natural wood, you only have a few more days to come to the shop and buy it. <laughs> save it from the paint. Save, save it from the paint. Because it will sell once we paint it. It'll sell quick. Yeah, especially buffets. They always sell well. Do you have something white swan to place next to this? Probably. Yeah, Zeb, bring me that That's, lamp right there. That's white this, swan. This lamp is white swan. So to give you guys a contrast. Oh yeah, yeah you can definitely tell so that. So here's tarnished pearl. Here, let me bring them close. Okay. Against white swan. There you go. The depth of this color is really pretty. All right, I'm gonna get the heat gun out. And we'll get this dried up a little bit. Anna says, I sold a natural wood, only one I've ever put in my shop. Now, here's the thing about natural wood. If I were to strip it down and I were to stain it, um, like use the milk paint and do one of those like really light gray brown faux stains on the natural wood, or even use the, um, the old and gray by DIY paint and stain it that way. Don't worry. It would totally sell because I'd done that before, but it took me like three weeks to strip the dang thing. Well, not really, but it took a long time to strip it. It took me an entire day in the garage to strip it. Well, I think it was two days in the garage. No, it was a, well, yeah, because I had to let it dry out so I could uh, yeah. sand some of the spots. That piece did sell right away, but usually the yellow woods, they just don't sell. So because I'm heat gunning this, I may get, even with the uh, extra bond in there, I may get some crackle and chipping because the heat gun forces that. So somebody asked if I had a tip for cleaning faux flowers. Yeah, you can use a can of air, will help clean them. Or if you get one of those Swiffer dusters with the removable duster heads, you can use those Swiffer dusters and they almost like, it's like a magnet for dust and it'll clean the dust off of them. And sometimes after I do that, then I'll take a Swiffer duster and spray a little bit of um, 
cleaner on it, and then I'll dust it with that, and that'll get them nice and clean. Ruthie says you're a bull in a china shop. Well, it's all piled up down here over on the floor, and I'm walking around it. It's not as bad as it sounds. I'm barely tapping it with my toe. It just clanks it. Oh, vintage vibes. Someone said earlier, put them in a paper bag with salt and shake it, and that takes the dust off of the greenery. I try to buy it when it's not too dusty. Like, most of the greenery, except for those topiaries, didn't have much dust. How's it going? It's going well. I've got a couple little drips on these scallops I'm trying to chase. Yeah, the milk paint is thinner, so you got to be careful. Well, and I had it thick, but it was so thick it was almost like a paste. So I thinned it out a little bit more. Oh, Sally Michaels Designs. Hey, Sally Michaels. Hey, Sally. Oh, there's also a special spray for silk flowers. Jay Condon says. So, hi, Santi. Let's see, which Santi is on here? So if you guys, if you guys are in our uh, Jamie Ray Vintage Facebook group, we met Sally, I guess it's almost been two years ago now. Her and her husband, Michael, came and saw us when we were out in uh, Fallbrook, California at Mara's shop. Mara LeFay has a shop. She's a DIY retailer and she sells IAB and things. And, and she was just getting started painting things. And now to see her work, she's doing some really incredible pieces. It's just fun to kind of see where people go. They get a paintbrush in their hand and they get creative and they start making stuff. And it's awesome to see that transformation. Um, somebody also just said to use a blow dryer. So. Oh, a blow dryer for getting yep. the dust off? So he's using sweet pickings and pantador. I am getting some crackle in the edges where it's thick. I think it'll still stick really well because of that extra bun. Yeah. I'm about ready to put a second coat on this. This one's almost dry. wet to stress that gold back through the cream. Sally says you made her feel like a million bucks. Sally does amazing work. She sent me a picture of a piece she just finished. I'm only it's, speaking the truth, Sally. I can't tell you about it because I don't think she's posted yet, but it's gorgeous. Oh, they said use an air compressor. Yeah, if you have an air compressor with a nozzle on it, you can blow it off too. That's what we do at home. Laura says we're on late. It's 9.28. We usually stay on for at least an hour. We got a few more minutes. I'm going to try to get a second coat on this so you guys can see it. All right. So we also it's... have to use the hemp oil, so we got about. Oh, like yeah, minutes. I got to hemp oil that up. When I'm doing the second coat, I'm usually not as picky as the first coat. So this is what I'm talking about. You see the crackle from the heat gun? It wouldn't have done that had I just let it air well, dry. Well, it probably would. It, it still cracks, but it usually cracks smaller when it air dries. All right, I'm gonna second coat this real quick so it looks like something. It always gets worse before it gets better. When you paint something, you're like, oh, that doesn't look very good, but that's right. You gotta be willing better. to, gotta be willing to go through the paint. I felt like that when we were painting that big hutch, that French hutch. <laughs> and I was like, what are you doing? I'm like, don't, don't worry, it's gonna be good. I promise. I really had no idea. I hadn't actually done that finish before, but I figured, why not make a YouTube video on something you haven't done before? The second coat, when you put it on, you, you just feel like it covers so great because it's pretty much full coverage on the second coat. So if you're just tuning in, I'm using the new formula of Tarnished Pearl, which um, just came out, and it's more like the color of a Tarnished Pearl. The old formula, we do still have some, so if you need it, you can email customer care at jamierayvintage.com and we can get that for you. Um, they switched it up and made it even more awesome. Is Tarnish Pearl flat? Yes, it's not metallic. It is a clay-based paint, so when it dries, it will dry lighter, and then when you seal it, it'll get darker. <clears throat> Can you guys get a water bottle over next to me? Mm -hmm. I've been yakking too much, too much talking. I'm answering all the questions. Anna says she loves Tarnish Pearl better than White Swan. So if you love the old Tarnish Pearl color, when we do run out of it, which will happen, um, just by crinoline, and if you add just a little bit of white swan to it, you're going to get almost the exact same color. Alright. 
thing about Debbie is she's nothing if not a perfectionist. So I think she wasn't quite. She like, wasn't happy with the way it came out. She wasn't 100% thrilled and she's like, it's good, but it's not perfect. And she just tweaked it to make it look amazing. But the, the color, uh, all the new colors were coming out. So she launched it in retrospect. She's like, yeah, we're going to change that. We're going to make it perfect. And it is. It's perfect. Oops. All right, it kind of makes this look a little bit like stone, which it is. All right, I think I got enough paint on there. I'm not worried about 100% coverage because I'm going to come and wet distress this. All right, how are the kids doing? They're doing good. It's wrestling season for two of my boys, so we're busy with that. Cheer season for my oldest daughter, and so basketball. It's really busy because they have lots and lots of games more than football season. And then I have a daughter who plays basketball. So Jack is the only one without an activity. And today I asked him, I said, sweetie, you want to do um, wrestling next year? Because you'll be old enough. And he goes, um, that looks like it hurts, mom. <laughs> I'm not interested. All right, you want to pass me the um, heat gun? Thank you. So you got, you got some paint on your boobs. What? <laughs> on, your, on your chest happens. Alright. It's alright. This was a free shirt from Laguna. I, I, I spent thousands of dollars on my CNC machine and they sent me a shirt, but I had to take a survey to get it. <laughs> I did get the CNC machine, you know. Well, that was also <laughs> they, they did send. They did send that. <laughs> Wendy says, I was supposed to be painting smalls for my space tonight, but I have painter's block. So a little tip for that that I like to do is I like to just rapid fire pick colors and then I organize them by what color they're gonna be painted. She goes, she goes on Pinterest. Yeah, then I organize them by color and then I just paint one color at a time. And then, I'll, then after I paint them, then I'll divide up like these ones I want to stencil, these ones need a mold or maybe a transfer. And I just start from there rather than trying to pick out every detail of the piece. Um, we had a question about booth rent a while back and I missed it. Booth rent is really subjective, so I can't really tell you what's good and what's bad. I've only rented one booth. Um, well, and it depends on your area too. If it doesn't make area. sense profit wise for you, if, you if you're basically out. giving you all to... your money away to the shop that you're renting a booth space from, then it might not yeah. work. I would just estimate what you think you're going to make a month and it shouldn't be more than, you know, I don't know, 15% or so of what you're going to make, 20% of your total. Because I paid, how much did I pay? So we were paying... paying 20% or 50%? So we were paying 15% commission when we rented from plus, Molly's. Plus $200 a month. Plus $200 a month. We were paying 20%. For rent, it was 15 Okay, so you, Seb used a whisk instead of an immersion blender, and there's yeah, there's some a little bit chunks of chunks in here. On this, but they'll sand off. It's, it's okay. also because I didn't put enough water in it. I was trying to go thick, and I went real thick. All right, I need that. Oh, you need that. Oil on it. I'll show you the second coat on this, but I feel like this pantry door color is is one of the closest to those old school farmhouse greens. It and aviary and DIY paint, they're just really good old school farmhouse style green colors. So the cake plate will sell for around $20 to $24. Yeah. Kind of depends on how awesome it is when it's finished. Like I was going to say 20 but now I'm like, ooh, that's good. I, then, I'll smooth it out. I'll uh, I'll smooth it. There's a little bit of chunks on the top. I kind of like it though. It makes it look like stone. Yes, yeah, it gave it kind of some texture, huh? Yeah, I do like it. All right. Um, let's see. What's the best way to mix up milk paint? So I just pour the paint in dry at the ratio that I want. Like if I want 50-50 or whatever, and then I add the water to it and mix it up. And I do feel like using an immersion blender is best. Any reading comments? Yeah, Issa says if I want to redo a cutting board. So you can use any of the milk paint and you can use the hemp oil on the cutting boards and it'll be food safe. But 
feel like I answered everybody. But I'm gonna answered every. Oh, you answered all the questions. So a cutting board, you're going to want to paint it or faux stain it with the milk paint. Let that dry completely, and then use the hemp oil on it. Hold on. And whatever's in this extra bond, it makes it real sticky. Caitlin, screen. Why? Why is that photo on there? Caitlin sent us a screenshot. Is that what our thumbnail is, or was that just what we were doing at the time? What are you talking about? I don't know. I don't think it's the thumbnail. Thanks, Caitlin. Sorry, I got distracted. Moving on. All right, I'm back. Hey, no I'm sending gonna... Jamie texts on the side while she's live. Oh, mixing multiple colors of milk paint. You're just going to put the colors you want in a dish at the ratio that you want and then add the water and mix it. That's how I do it. Kaylin said it's the thumbnail, so you must have messed up the thumbnail. Well, good thing I got a before pick. Okay. I got to I gotta go. It looks like you're like scratching your nose. It looks like that. I'm picking my nose. I'll, I'll <laughs> fix it right after we're not live anymore. So the first 2,000 people that watch this are going to see that. It's cool. You know what, that really now that it's drying, it doesn't look gray. It looks like an old aged white. Alright, I'm almost done with this heat gun here. Okay, good, because I gotta finish heat gunning this. by me but I will get a picture of it when it's done I have a good friend of mine she comes in often her name's Karen Denning and she offered to pay me what I would sell it for painted but she wanted to paint it for her daughter and I was like how can I say no like of course so she's gonna buy it when she gets it all painted she's an amazing artist I will ask her if she'll allow me to share it I'm sure she will because she's awesome like that and I'll show you guys what it looks like because I couldn't I couldn't make a decision so I'm glad that somebody else is going to be able to do it. Anna says that's a win-win. That is a win-win. Heidi says she's become a paint snob. That happens when you use good paint. It does happen. You go to Karen, use... Karen's on here. She says that's what good friends do. <laughs> I let her back in my, my back room. Came in the back room and she's like, "Oh, what's back here?" But she was impressed because it's much cleaner than the last time she was back here. <laughs> what's the difference between the two tarnished pearls? So the old formula is closer to crinoline, and this is more of a um, off-white, not necessarily a cream. It's in the grayish family of off-whites. So hopefully that explains it. We'll take lots of good pictures of it. Can you put a top coat over stain? Um, yes, so if you're using traditional stain that's oil-based, you need to let it dry completely and then use Sweet Pickens top coat. Traditional stain usually takes about 24 hours to dry. Depending on humidity. Yeah. I've had it take a week. Yeah, I don't use traditional stain anymore now that I have, I either use milk paint and I make a faux stain or I use the dark and decrepit or the old and gray, so I haven't used traditional in a while, but. All right, this is taking a little longer because I mixed the paint up so thick, but I think we're almost there. Sorry, you guys have had to watch me heat gun this and just roll it around the table for so long. That's all right. I'm if you're still hanging in there, you're doing great. Okay. Can you top coat Danish oil? Um, I would not. Oops, I just spilled a lot of water. I wouldn't top coat Danish oil because you never want to put a water-based top coat over like an oil because oil normally needs to breathe. Right. Yeah, it's 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 kind of like uh, like top coating over like a wax. You want to leave that oh, with wait. some. These top these are not very good for wet distressing. All right, I'm gonna wet distress this. You should go do that right in front of the camera without hitting the camera though. Without can hitting you do the that? Camera? I don't know. Can you show them close? All right. I'm almost done. I keep saying that, but I am. Okay. So I'm taking this, it's just got water on it, and I'm pulling back the paint. 
And you can't do this with latex paint or spray paint or any paint that has a top coat in there, but you can do it with water-soluble water paints like DIY. And you don't have to use sandpaper, which on something like this, you wouldn't want to sandpaper it. Trying to find the wet spots. These towels don't really absorb the water very well. as done as I'm gonna be. They've, they've, they've listened to the heat gun long enough. All right. And I am going to, I think I'm just gonna get this rag over here. That, oh, that's a much better rag than what I have. <laughs> you win. Instead of using a lint-free rag, I'm using one of those towels from Ikea that doesn't soak up any water. Water all over this. Although this just all ran down <laughs> off of this. Aunt B says it's calming to watch you do it. It's like ASMR. Oh, really? You're going to put her to sleep. Can I have that water? Yep. All right. Here, all right I'm going to finish. Tip of that. Oh, yeah. I would, it would be my luck that I burn myself alive. Okay, so I'm just going to real lightly go around all the edges here. See if I can get some of this to pull back off. You're probably going to have to use sandpaper. I might. Because you use bond in it. Does it? Bond makes that paint stick really well. I've got a couple spots where it was peeling. They can't see it. Oh, I'm over here <laughs> off camera. I'm like, oh, let me get close and do this, but not show you. All right, Jamie's right. I'm gonna have to do some sanding. What did you say? Jamie's what? Only Skip. once. All right, Seb only will tell me one time that I'm right. I don't get to hear it twice. Well, you always say you want to hear it again, like like you're goading me, like I never say it. I, well, not very often, but I don't, in my in your defense, I don't really say you're right that often either. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm gonna keep working on this so you guys can see it all the way wet, distressed. But I'm really bringing back some of that. Paint. It had a really gorgeous finish on it originally, it just was darker than. I would have liked. And I always try to change things up so people aren't getting it straight from the thrift store. You know what's funny is Jean said, Jean is a gal that works for us. She's a Jean Marie. You have to talk loud. Jean Marie's son was watching us and said, they tell people how much they pay for it and then they sell it in the store. <laughs> like, yep. Every business buys low and sells for more than they pay for. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in business. If you ask Walmart or Hobby Lobby or any of those stores, if they would be honest with you and they told you how much they marked up their stuff, you would be surprised. And they don't even do anything to it. They just slap it in their store. But that's what retail business is. I have so many people that come in and that shop for me that say, you know, I go to DI and I don't see the things that you're seeing. Well, we do paint the stuff and change it usually. Well, sometimes it's just finding it. Leah says, thank you both so much. Um, what was the original color? This was like a dark brown and this yeah. was gold. If you start back at the beginning of the video, we show this in the in the video before it got painted so you can see it. I don't even remember how much it was already. I think it was $4. Okay. Would you paint a sideboard or coffee table and pantry door? Oh heck yes. Um, my favorite color with the milk paint is to mix pantry door with Sweetie Jane 50-50. If you've ever seen that big chippy cabinet that's in my living room, um, that cabinet came from my my girl Marlene, and um, it's painted in a 50-50 mix of Sweetie Jane and Pantry Door, and it's really pretty, and it looks authentically old. Everybody comes in and they're like, oh my gosh, where did you get that? I'm like, oh, bulk trash pickup day. That's where, that's where it was found. It wasn't painted when I found it, but... Have, I think chickens have lived in it maybe before. <laughs> Something. It was. It, it, was it, it all got painted every surface. I, I was like, I did not thing, know what lived in here before. I hosed that thing down in the yard for a good hour or two. Yeah, people love to come in because they know what look is curated. You definitely people walk don't walk into my store and say, oh, this looks just like a thrift store because by the time we're done with it, it definitely doesn't. But I like to share with people because it gives people an idea of what they can look for if they're in the same business as us or if they're decorating or what have you. Because so many things can have a new life. If you've ever watched documentaries on retail business, I'm kind of a nerd, I like dark, I like dark documentaries, and they will show you the amount of waste that goes into manufacturing, you will be like, 
gross. I'm never buying new again. Like, there's so many things that just never even get bought and just get thrown away. T-shirts are a bad one. Yeah. They said that maybe I could put a pencil eraser on there so nobody hurts themselves. I think it'll be okay once I'm no longer painting it. Of course, you'll have to cut it off later. Yeah. That's probably more likely. All right, this might get loud. I'm going to sand the top surface of it. Right, I'm going to show this up close. To get rid of the bumpy from the paint. All right, let's get this one up close. Ironically, look at the bottom. It was very similar color before they added all the layers of paint. But here's what this finished candlestick looks like in the tarnished pearl. It's still a little wet in a few spots. Which piece in my house? So I have a big chippy green hutch. If you scroll through Instagram, you might see it. And that paint is painted half and half. It used to be my old paint hutch. So if you watch our paint hutch organizing videos, that's the one. All right, look at that. So this will just get a coat of clear wax on it and that's it. It'll be done. To me, it looks like something you'd find that's in like an old European chateau that's been like aged and it got real nice and chippy. I love all the detail on it. So this candlestick will probably sell for about $25. I don't remember what I said before, but this size and how awesome it came out, I'm going to ask $24.95. $24.95. And I think, how much did I say I paid for? Like four or five? I can't remember. It was four, I believe. There were so right. many things that were like four or five dollars. Is wax tonight. better than a liquid top coat for metal? Um, not necessarily, but I don't want it to be shiny. So I'll just put a clear coat of wax. It'll dry and it'll be good. And something like this is not going to get scrubbed. Like, honestly, if this was at my house, I wouldn't even bother to wax it. I would leave it just the way it is. Because once that paint cures in 30 days, it's not going anywhere. It was not shiny to begin with, so that paint really just gets soaked up. I'm just trying to smooth some of my uh, sanding marks out here oh, with good. the water. And yeah. then... So if you ever, this is a good tip. If you ever sand and you're like, that looks kind of streaky, then go back and wet distress the opposite direction. And so instead of having a straight line of distress, it'll kind of make the line go each direction and makes it look more naturally worn. Um, sometimes that happens. You'll go to sand it and it'll be just, it'll look kind of like zebra stripes and it's not pretty. You can come back and wet distress it and make it look more organic. All right, I might have to play with this later. We got to go pick up Eliza from her friend's house. That's okay. We can show them the hemp oil. All right. The top is good. I don't think it looks fine. I don't know why you're spreading over there. Um, the cake stand is not glass. It is metal. Okay, so we're going to be using Sweet Pickens hemp oil here. I haven't used it before, but the directions say apply with a brush, let penetrate. Oh, I know how to use hemp oil. Let me have that. Okay. <laughs> you tell them. <laughs> let penetrate yeah. for 5 to 25 minutes and wipe off. We won't wait. I mean, we won't wipe it off while we're live because we got to go. We really do need to pick up Eliza. But. And we're using it in a separate uh, container because we don't want to contaminate like our whole container. And obviously it's really hard the to get down The paintbrush isn't going to fit in there. That's why. Yeah. I did it. And a little goes a long way. So just pour out just a little teeny tiny bit. It's going to be kind of shiny. Once it's penetrated and sat down in, then you're going to take a lint-free rag and wipe it back in 5 to 25 minutes. And then it says you may apply one to three coats, let it dry for two hours in between. So if you want to apply more coats so it's more durable, let it dry two hours before you apply the next coat. And then it says I'm tempted let it dry to try using it. Use. I'm tempted to try using it on our kitchen island. It also says always best to test in a hidden hidden area before applying to an entire piece. I'd love to use it on the island. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I mean we'll use this. All right, so if you guys are interested in the paint and products we use tonight, you can pick them up at jamierayvintage.com. A lot of you guys know that, but I know we have new people. We're gonna drop links below. This is the new formula of Tarnished Pearl, so if you order Tarnished Pearl, this is the color you're going to get. If you need the old formula, you just email customercare at jamierayvintage.com, and if we have it in stock, we'll ship it to you. Zeb used Pantry Door, Sweet Pickens Pantry Door, and then um, Extra Bond, and then we're sealing it with the hemp oil because it's food safe. All of our products are all natural, which is awesome. And it's also the reason we can paint inside without wearing a mask. Which is also awesome. And it won't be super shiny once we wipe it off. It'll be about a satin finish. That's where hemp oil usually finishes off. Okay, let me show you guys up close. I'm gonna, I'll seal the rest of it later, but. 
All right, we love you guys. Seb's going to show this up to you super close so you can see it. So you can see the distressing. Kind of took a little more off in the corners because no, it wasn't quite it. dry in a couple places. But That turned out really good. And we hit the edges a little bit. And down here on the base, there was a big chunk of paint here that hadn't dried and it zipped off. And I went with a foam brush just because I'm not going to wash the, the uh, hemp oil out. I'll just throw the brush away. So I feel like with this kind of an application, you might want to use a disposable brush. So normally I would do multiple projects. That way I'm using that brush over and over again before I dispose of it. All right, bye you guys. Give us a thumbs up, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. Love you guys.